I can appreciate cone of light in antero inferior quadrant. Handle of malleolus in antero superior quadrant. An umbo in the junction of cone of light and handle of malleolus. No retraction, no bulging, no air fluid level, no perforation, no bleeding, no discharge, no wax over tympanic membrane. Therefore, my diagnosis is normal tympanic membrane. The normal tympanic membrane is thin and semi-transparent. When viewed through an otoscope, it has a pearly grey appearance, and often, some structures within the middle ear, such as the long process of the incus and the opening of the eustachian tube, can be seen, if it is sufficiently transparent. Where the outer margin of the drum is attached to the external canal, it is thickened and called, the annulus fibrosa. The upper fifth of the drum is slack and called, the pars flaxida and the lower four fifths called, the pars tensa. The handle of the malleus, which extends downwards and backwards, is a reliable landmark. The short process of the malleus protrudes forwards into the external canal. The umbo is the central attachment of the tympanic membrane to the malleus. From the umbo a cone of light extends downwards and forwards. The blood supply of the tympanic membrane comes from the ear canal superiorly. Prominent blood vessels on the rim superiorly are within normal limits. I can appreciate tympanic membrane obstructed with a brown material. Color of wax in transition from pale yellow, golden yellow, golden brown and finally brown. Cone of light, handle of malleolus and umbo cannot be appreciated. Therefore, my diagnosis is wax over tympanic membrane. Wax or cerumen is a normal secretion in the ceruminous glands in the outer part of the meatus and can obscure or partially obscure the drum. When it is first produced, it is colorless and semi-liquid in consistency, but with time it changes from pale yellow, to golden yellow, to light brown and finally black. As the wax darkens it also hardens, and the darker the color the denser the consistency. I can see tympanic membrane which is red, inflamed, congested, edematous, and tense. I can appreciate an air fluid level in antero superior and postero superior quadrants. Cone of light, handle of malleolus and umbo cannot be appreciated. Annulus can be appreciated. Therefore, my diagnosis is acute otitis media with effusion. There is distortion of the drum, prominent blood vessels in the upper half, with dullness of the lower half. There is also bulging of the upper half of the drum, and the outline of the malleus is obscured. I can see tympanic membrane which is red, inflamed, congested, edematous, and tense. There is no air fluid level. Cone of light, handle of malleolus and umbo cannot be appreciated. Annulus can be appreciated. Therefore, my diagnosis is acute otitis media without effusion. The handle of the malleus is obscured, and fluid levels are obvious behind the drum. I can see tympanic membrane which is red, inflamed, congested, edematous, and tense. I can appreciate bulge in tympanic membrane, which is the postero inferior quadrant, due to pus of fluid behind tympanic membrane. Cone of light, handle of malleolus and umbo cannot be appreciated. Annulus can be appreciated. Therefore, my diagnosis is acute otitis media with bulging, which may progress to perforation, or it is an impending perforation. There is considerable bulging of the eardrum, with purulent fluid behind a tense tympanic membrane, which sometimes heralds perforation. In some cases incision of the drum is required. I can see tympanic membrane which is red, inflamed, congested, edematous, and tense. There is no air fluid level or bulge. Cone of light, handle of malleolus and umbo cannot be appreciated. Annulus can be appreciated. Therefore, my diagnosis is secretory otitis media. The eardrum has lost its luster, and an effusion is visible through the eardrum, with a fluid meniscus, defining the upper margin. Fluid behind the eardrum seen in, an asymptomatic child. A fusion is visible, with a fluid level in the lower half of the eardrum. The handle of the malleus is also difficult to visualize. The handle of the malleus is still foreshortened, and horizontal. Signs in the upper half of the eardrum suggest, that fluid is, still present in the middle ear.
I can see tympanic membrane which is red, inflamed, congested, edematous, and tense. There is no air fluid level or bulge. Cone of light, handle of malleolus and imbo cannot be appreciated. Annulus can be appreciated. Therefore, my diagnosis is secretory otitis media. There is drawing of a dull ear drum and the handle of the malleus is characteristically horizontal. Eustachian tube obstruction had led to failure of replacement of air, which is normally absorbed from the middle ear, resulting in vacuum formation and effusion of fluid. I can see tympanic membrane. Cone of light, handle of malleolus, and umbo cannot be appreciated. Annulus can be appreciated. I can also appreciate white calcified plaque in antero superior quadrant. Therefore, my most probably diagnosis is tympanosclerosis. In some cases of otitis media, healing may not be completed and the inflammatory process leads to the formation of scar tissue. This can take the form of calcified plaques on the tympanic membrane. I can see tympanic membrane. Cone of light and umbo cannot be appreciated but can appreciate handle of malleolus which is distorted. I can appreciate a large central perforation in antero-inferior and postero-inferior quadrants. I can also appreciate few white calcified plaques over tympanic membrane. Therefore, my most probable diagnosis is central perforation with tympanosclerosis. Perforations are usually single, but may be multiple. Spontaneous rupture of the drum can occur, in association with acute infection, when the tense drum perforates and releases pus. The ear drum illustrated, has a long-standing perforation accompanied by tympanosclerosis of the drum. I can see tympanic membrane. Cone of light, handle of malleolus and umbo cannot be appreciated. Annulus can be appreciated. I can also appreciate a foreign body, in postero-inferior quadrant, most probably a grommet. Therefore, my most probable diagnosis is grommet in tympanic membrane. Grommets can be inserted in the tympanic membrane, if medical treatment and neurimotomy are unsuccessful, and the child has persistent middle ear effusion. The illustration is a silicon tube, retained in an opening in the drum by inner and outer flanks. 